I think, you know, the inflammation story is, is really central to everything that's happening in chronic disease. That's, you know, and I think that's why with COVID-19, we're seeing such a problem in our society, particularly in America, because we are the um, among, you know, there's a few countries like Mexico, maybe worse, but we're among the worst in terms of our metabolic health. And you wrote about it in your article, like 12% of us uh, down from 19% of us are metabolically healthy. That means 88% are not metabolically healthy and are experiencing some degree of this level of inflammation and even mood and cognitive issues. And so, you know, I think, uh, what advice would you give people who are listening or at home, still struggling with the shelter at home, still struggling with trying to figure out how to get through this and feeling depressed and, you know, filling their shopping carts with Hawaiian punch and, and pop tarts. Like what, what, what should people be doing to protect themselves both physically and mentally? So uh- I would say to you know any American listening, whether they have a pre-existing chronic medical condition or not, the single most effective intervention that they can take today, you know, besides not smoking, obviously, especially now, is is to not overload their body with that excess sugar and the highly refined carbohydrates. Uh, it causes a lot of damage to the body, and we really should be encouraging improvements in health and immunity in, in every way possible. And we should look to other ways to increase our, you know, dopamine, for example, and improve our immunity. And sleep is really important. Physical movement, you know, we may not necessarily have the same access to the gyms that that we do um, before, but even if you can just move, um, that's going to be helpful. And getting connected to close friends or family and and not feeling that loneliness or the isolation, it's physical distancing is different than social distancing. 